Mr. Chairman. Mr. Berger, uh, uh, during the Clinton administration, was bin Laden ever offered up to uh, the United States by any country? No. Okay. Um, I have a longer version of that answer, which I provided to Senator Shelby earlier, but the short answer is fine. no. That's fine. Um, during the time you acted as National Security Advisor, did you and your colleagues ever reach the conclusion that offensive action needed to be taken against al-Qaeda as well as bin Laden himself? Yes. And when was that conclusion reached? From August 1998, the first time that the intelligence and law enforcement, particularly the intelligence community, was able to say to us, this is the responsibility of al-Qaeda and bin Laden. Uh, from that point on, the President authorized a series of overt and covert actions to try to get bin Laden and his top lieutenants. Did you develop any plan to dismantle or disrupt or go after the al-Qaeda organization? Yes. And, in fact, the intelligence community worked with intelligence agencies around the world, 97 on, uh, Al-Qaeda cells were dismantled or disrupted in about 20 countries. There was not as much receptivity, Congressman, today then as there was today. There were some countries uh, which did not take the threat as seriously then as today, uh, were more protective of civil liberties and uh, ethnic communities uh, than, than uh, today. But there was an active and aggressive effort by the intelligence community working with liaison agencies to disrupt and dismantle uh, al-Qaeda cells, and that succeeded in more than 20 countries. During the latter weeks and months of the Clinton administration, was there a plan developed and proposed by you and your colleagues uh, to the Clinton administration with respect to the, the Bush administration of al-Qaeda? You mean to the Bush administration, sir? Well, initially, I'd like to know if it, was, uh, if it was proposed to President Clinton. We were continually looking at what we were doing, <laughs> looking at new techniques, looking at new steps we could take. In the fall, in, in February of 2000, for example, I sent a memo to President Clinton outlining what we were doing, and he wrote back, this is not satisfactory. It was particularly related to how do you find this guy? We've got to do more. And that prompted us. Uh, to work with the intelligence community and the military on uh, a new technique for detecting bin Laden. I'm not able to talk about it in this forum. We tested that in the fall uh, of 2000. Actually, it was very promising uh, as a way of determining where he would be if we had one strand of uh, human intelligence. So there were, we're continually looking at how we could up the ante. But, but did you have a plan, a plan that could be executed to disrupt or take out bin Laden and disrupt the organization? Yes, sir, and we were executing that plan. Right. Now, the, question, the second question you asked, was there, which comes off the Time Magazine story, I think, was there a plan that we turned over to the Bush administration during the transition, if I could address that? Um, we, br the, the transition, as you will recall, was condensed. Uh, by virtue of uh, the election in November. Um, I was very focused on using the time that we had. I had been on the other side of the transition with General Scowcroft in 1992, that we used that time very efficiently to convey to my successor uh, the most important information, what was going on and what situations they faced. Number one among those was terrorism and al-Qaeda. And I told that to uh, my successor. She's acknowledged that uh, publicly, so I'm not uh, violating any private conversation. We briefed them fully uh, on what we were doing, on what else was uh, uh, under consideration, uh, and what the threat was. I personally uh, attended part of that briefing to emphasize how important that was. But there was no war plan that we turned over to the Bush administration uh, during the transition, and the reports of that are just incorrect.